Hey guys and welcome to a new video covering the new monthly D&D being the Effigy Incubator. In this video I'll be going over the D&D, how to unlock it, how to properly do it, the experience rates and so on. So when you're ready grab your cup of tea, sit back, relax and enjoy. This new monthly D&D has a couple of requirements. First off, the recently released Desperate Measures quest must be complete. You also require the Sins of Father mini quest, which I'll be covering in this video. And to do the D&D, you need level 85 in either smithing, runecrafting, crafting, or invention. To unlock the D&D, start by going to the Anaconia Lodestone and walk towards Mr. Mordout. Talk to Mr. Mordout. When you get a set of chat options, choose the first option to talk about Karapak. Then accept the mini quest prompt. After doing so, go back down to the lodestone and talk to either Elisa or Altheus. Ask about Karapak again. If you like, you can read the dialogue, but otherwise you can just spacebar through it. After the conversation, go north and exit the base camp. You're going to go to the area where you initially finished the Desperate Measures quest. Head towards the Dragon King statue and you'll get a dialogue prompt. After this dialogue prompt, you'd want to click on the door or statue to investigate. Then enter through the door that just appeared. Inside, go ahead and talk to the NPC whose name starts with Vice. It doesn't matter which dialogue options you pick, by the way. You will now have to do some kind of tutorial. If you want all the steps to the tutorial, just simply look on screen and follow along with the text you can see. It doesn't take very long at all, it takes about 1 or 2 minutes to complete, and after this you can start the monthly D&D. Just be sure to go through all the dialogue just in case. In fact, you're better off reading the dialogue because it will help you understand the D&D more in the second part of this video. To start the D&D, use the lever inside the room. Then try and bladed dive towards the middle of the room or just walk there or surge there if you don't have bladed dive. Gather six effigy cases. Keep in mind you only need to click this area once. The reason you gather six is going to become very clear very soon. There's a chance of you actually completing seven or possibly even eight, but that depends on your RNG. That's why you start by gathering six. Then once you get five, you want to start looking around which fragments you'd like. These switch around every so often. You want to pick a certain effigy type you're going to be creating beforehand so that you know which type of effigy you're going to have after you finish the D&D, because certain effigies can only be filled up with certain skills. See the image in the video for further reference. Now gathering the fragments isn't the only thing you need to do. Whenever you see fragments get yeeted out on the floor, you want to be sure to pick those up to get them as a bonus. The great thing about these fragments is, is that you keep gathering from your main spot even if you click on the ejected fragments, meaning your main action isn't interrupted at all. The ejecting fragments aren't the only thing you need to pay attention to. You also need to pay attention to the rotating colors, because once they do switch, you want to go to the same color as fast as you can by using bladed dive, surge, or simply running. While doing this D&D, you have a random chance to spawn a effigy remnant. Once it spawns, and if it's the same color as the one you're gathering, you want to click on it as fast as you can. Again, ejected fragments can be picked up while gathering from this thing, but this remnant also gives you double the resources per tick. If you get one of these spawns early on, you should be able to go to the middle eventually and gather another effigy case to get a total of 7 filled up in one D&D run. Or possibly even 8 if you get 2 of these effigy remnants. Although I cannot calculate the exact amount you can create yet, because I can only do this twice a month. Once you have your 120 fragments and your 6 empty cases, is go to the workbench and create uncharged effigies. This will also give you a heap of experience. After doing this, go to the effigy incubator and put them inside. The reason you want to do this within your timer is because you get double the effigies at the end. Once the blue bar fills, you'll be able to grab your effigies from the effigies incubator and you'll be done. You want to do this within the timer. 
Now, as you guys can see, I still have time left over, and that's because I got an effigy remnant. I should have easily been able to do seven of those empty effigy cases. So I just go ahead and gather a little bit more to gain a little more experience, because the main chunk of your experience will be coming from gathering those enchanted fragments. Again, to clarify, please do not incubate your effigies after the timer's ended, because you'll only get one per uncharged effigy. Also, another thing you can't do is collecting empty cases after the 5 minute timer has ended, meaning you cannot create these effigies outside of the D&D. You can only incubate them after the timer has ended. You cannot actually craft the uncharged versions. Also, please do not leave the area with empty cases and your enchanted fragments, because as soon as you leave, you will lose all of your enchanted fragments for whatever reason. You don't actually lose your regular fragments, which you can hand in for incubation points to get the pets, or more of those effigies. Yes, the charged version. You can buy them for 200 fragments each. And yes, you can use your monthly D&D reset token to do this D&D twice a month. This is very important because the experience rate is actually insane. Here are three examples doing the D&D with the related experience rate per hour. Keep in mind you can only do this D&D five minutes a month and you can only do it twice if you're using a reset token. I assume the experience per gather is lower at level 85 in these skills than when you're level 99, so if you're level 85, your experience rate per hour might be a little lower. Also, if you have no interest in using the effigies after finishing the D&D, you can potentially get more experience per hour by simply gathering the fragments and not creating the effigies. Although, keep in mind the effigies once filled up in the live game and cracked do give you experience lamps and prismatic fallen stars, aka bonus XP. Now, for whatever reason, bonus experience doesn't seem to work when gathering as of this moment, when this video is uploaded, but this might be changed in the future. The easiest way to describe these active effigies after finishing the D&D is a multi-skill urn, as they fill up when doing various skills depending on the effigy type. When filled up, you can crack these effigies and get either an experience lamp or an effigy experience star, rewarding you with bonus experience. They fill up rather slowly when doing skills like divination, at least I personally noticed this, but a fast way to fill them up instantly is by using your play-owned farm animals at 100% happiness, gathering their produce from baby to elder, and you fill them up extremely quickly. Although, keep in mind, play-owned farm animals of course take time to grow. So far, I believe these effigies do not work with proteins, so keep that in mind. I don't want to cover what it does or doesn't work on, as I believe it will be changed, and otherwise this video might have some misinformation. So with that being said, I'd like to end off this video. If you enjoyed this video or found it helpful, please leave a like down below, and maybe even consider subscribing, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. Peace.